my topic today will be about how to build your personal brand, uh, speaking from the freelancer to the CEO. Um, that's the first time this topic I'm covering, you know, in the international audience. So please bear with me, please support me, and please don't laugh. <laughs> okay, I hope that you had a very nice evening yesterday. I'm sorry I couldn't join you in person in Ukraine, although I planned. But you know, you plan and someone laughs at you. Okay, so let's let's begin and maybe we will overview, you know, my presentation, what it will be about. So we will start who is Indra, the personal brand, what it's all about. Isn't important to have a personal brand? We will cover also some golden rules how to build a personal brand, but these golden rules are applied for me. I hope that you will be able to apply them as well and how I built and still build my own personal brand. And then we will switch to the QA session, or as far as I know, we will have the audience discussion after Ivona's presentation. So I'll be here, it should you have any questions, so feel free to ask. Okay, so let's begin, who is Indre? So I was born in Lithuania, and I am purely Lithuanian, and uh, uh, I am I am the CEO of the translation agency based in Lithuania, which is called BV Translations, or in the Lithuanian way, is Baltius Vertimai. I am a mother also of two boys who are 18 and 12 now, and I am also a former basketball player. So I had to choose between two, to be a professional basketball player or to be a translator and to be involved in the translation industry. So I chose the latter. So I got my degree in 2004 when I graduated the uh, uh, Konis University of Technology and I am the BA of the translation and interpreting of the technical language. I chose as a second language my English language. And since then I worked as a freelancer until 2013. And in 2013 I decided to change my career and uh, I joined the, the translation agency as a project manager. Uh, after a year or so, I was promoted as to, to the key account manager. And for a year, I also worked as uh, interim general manager. But in 2020, when I joined BV as business development manager, I in a few in a few months later, I was offered to take the seat of the CEO where I am now. So now it's been a year and it was a successful year and I'm very happy about it and I hope that we will continue in that way. So let's not waste our time and let's begin you know what the personal brand and what it's all about. A personal brand in many ways is who you are, what you stand for, the values you embrace and the way in which you express, express those values. Just as a company, brand helps to communicate its value to customers and stand out from the competition. A personal brand does the same for individuals. So the personal brand helps you to communicate a unique identity and clear value to the potential employers or, or the clients. Um, the, the brand co concept has always been directly associated with the companies, but not with the individuals. And, that become only recently. So in general, the brand, the, the personal brand uh, includes the corporate image, identity, colors, values, and all these makeups that give value to the brand and shape, you know, the perception of people create of the company. Uh, so Amazon founder Jeff Bezos once said, you know, the personal brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. So. Personal branding is the image that other people perceive of you because personal branding brings together all the, all the elements which people remember and by which people remember and recognize you. So it does not refer only to the physical perception, but it also covers, you know, the skills and the actions you do. And it, then, you know, it builds the general picture of you. So the personal branding gives you the opportunity to detail a person according to what it shows and what it's known about. So in general, it's what you are, 
who you are and what you achieve and what you do. So your personal brand should include, you know, these uh, these four highlights. So it's your strengths. You have to be clear about your strengths, establish your reputation, build trust, and communicate the unique attributes that you bring to the current or the industry you want. So just to move on, executing a personal brand without purpose makes no sense. The essence of this concept is to generate an impact on society and create a positive impact. So therefore, it is important to take into account these aspects to build a personal brand. And now I will switch to the, to the golden rules I want to talk about more, more, more in more details. So I hope that the translator follows me, you know, and I'm not too fast, but if I am, just please let me know and I will try to speak more slowly. So the golden rules, how to build a personal brand. These rules were not written by me, but uh, I tried to apply them in, in my personal practice when I was building my personal brand. Although I didn't do that on purpose, it came to me naturally. So the first one, keep the focus. A personal brand is a window that remains open. You cannot forget what you do and how you do it in personal branding is what will define you before the world. So you must take care of it properly. Too many people are unfocused when it comes to press and coverage, trying to be everyone to everything to everyone. So don't try to be, don't try to sell yourself, you know, to everyone. You are not the seller of the ice creams. People don't have to, all the people don't have to like you, you know, just to choose the network you want to be in and you know you are interested in and just keep the focus on that decide what your message is and stick to it so the the narrow focus is you know it's more easier for you to build your personal brand the second one would be you know be genuine that's an easy way to build a personal brand i'm telling you from my personal experience so it will make much easier for you to manage your personal brand on a daily basis if you if you are deeply skilled in one area, your reputation alone will be a half of your personal brand already. And the third one would be, you know, tell a story, tell your story. Don't uh, don't tell the other other people's stories. Create your own and tell a story. If your personal brand isn't telling a story, you've already lost a half of your potential customers or audience. No one wants to hear you shouting out about, you know, on the social media some stupid things so create a story around and build your brands to the audience that they want to engage with one of the best one, one of the best ways is to tell that story is through the written content of the deal so now we have so many tools you know we can use so you just choose the one that are more convenient for you and just do it be consistent it's very similar similar having a narrow focus so it's much easier to re be recognized on one topic than, you know, be be popular, how to say, in, in many topics or trying to cover too many topics. So ensure that your personal brand promise stays, stays consistent, both online and offline. So that applies when you are giving the presentations uh, online or if you are participating in some discussions or conferences online and uh, you do the same when you are being on site. And I'm sorry again, you know, I couldn't be on site with you today. Uh, the fifth one, also a good one, be ready to fail. And that's uh, actually Andrew Hickson yesterday, I was uh, covered uh, a, the bigger part of it. And I really enjoyed Andrew's presentation yesterday. So failure is tough, we all know that. And we all want to avoid it. That's a human nature and that's okay. So have a, to have a personal brand that rises above the rest, you need to have a failure. And that's a period. We are not, we are not discussing about that. You'll never achieve the best branding until you fail a couple of times. So you have to push yourself out of the comfort zone limits. And that's, uh, that's the, the rule. Also, the very best brands always come from repeated trial and errors, mistakes and failures, so just not from the instant perfection. So be ready to fail and don't be afraid of that. And moving on, create a positive impact, as I said, with my 
a few slides before. So after you developed a personal brand over some period of time, there were generally two ways to continue to build your brand. Hop over others and burn bridges or steadily grow the community around your brand. Keeping a positive attitude and helping others will help you healthy grow your personal brand. So you can, you can choose either ways. I, I chose the second one. Steady grow. Um, follow success examples. You know that we can find uh, many stories and many examples in our industry, you know, so choose, choose the ones, uh, choose the one you like, choose the ones you can apply in your, in your life and just follow them. Live your brand. That's also very important. As mentioned before, one of the ways you can make building a personal brand difficult on oneself is to separate your brand from your personal life, which is certainly doable. It's easier when, uh, when initially creating a personal brand to have your actual lifestyle and brand be one and the same. Uh, your personal brand should follow you everywhere you go. It needs to be authentic. And you just and amplify in what you believe. Uh, the, just before the last one, let other people tell your story. Uh, the best PR is by word of mouth. Word of mouth. Creating a personal brand in the public sphere is no exception to this rule as well. And the last one is leave a legacy. Once you've built a personal brand with a reputation and community behind, the next step is to think about the legacy that you'll leave behind. What are the keywords and actions you are being known for? A personal brand is a lifelong project that constantly evolves and changes. And don't be afraid, you know, to accept the changes. Even the experts who build or enhance the biggest brands in the businesses that know that there are no hard set rules for creating a personal brand. So these are the the golden rules I, I try to follow and I try to adapt in my everyday life. And I would highly suggest you to try at least with a few at the beginning and then trying to add one and another and another and another. Or maybe you can create your own rules. Who knows? Maybe you will rewrite the story. Um, creating the right personal brand will not only help you, be known in your field and in your field and consistently land work, but it could be different between who are you and thank you for being here. Uh, personal branding is one of the most favorable elements for those who want to undertake it. So working on it in a timely manner is what in principle will direct the course of your business. So uh, the personal brand is what is what will distinguish your project from the competitions. So today's society does not consume what they don't know. So the perception is they have they have to know what you do. They have to know your enterprise or business, and this will make this will make them choose you over the others. Uh, properly applied, personal branding will make you more visible provide confidence to the employers and therefore gen generate more job opportunities. This could be applied, you know, also for freelancers, for project managers, uh, I don't know, for every, every, every employee in the world. It doesn't matter who you are. So how I built and still build and building my own personal brand. So I accepted most unwanted jobs as a freelancer. As I mentioned, I started as a freelancer and we all know, you know, when you are the beginner, it's always difficult, you know, to get a good job, like big projects you want to be involved in because, you know, it takes time when, when you start doing the project, you have to be familiar, you know, with the terms, with, with the construction, with the processes and all so on. So I accepted most of one to job, but what this gave to me, I was, I gained more experience. I learned to. I learned how to be more diverse, you know, in the industry, also adaptable to the new challenges and issues. Also, I volunteered in the initiatives I was aware of. And uh, last year, when, when the COVID hit, uh, not our, only our industry, but the world, uh, me and my friend Al Dilgen from Ada Turkey, we, we started the Lockpub uh, initiative. 
So that's the Facebook group, you know, and anyone can join. Just please answer the questions first if you want to be accepted. So, sorry. <laughs> Can I go on? Hello. Uh, uh, yes, Andrea. Hello. Please, uh, yes, please go on. Because uh, I can hear uh -huh. myself speaking, so that's okay. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Thank you for okay. your <laughs> Good. Uh, so, speaking about Lock Club, now the group joins uh, over 900 members. And what we did, you know, since we were banned to go to the events uh, all over the world, so we we just decided to to create events online. You know, we invited our friends. We wanted to see each other. And you know, the funny thing is that when we were going live to the conferences, we used to see each other three or four times max a year. But when we started this log pub initiative, we we already start to see each other on a monthly basis and we say, oh yeah, I don't want to see you anymore. Come on, <laughs> we need some new faces. But it was fun and still is. So we didn't close that yet. And uh, fingers crossed, you know, the COVID will not come back, but you know, it will, I'm afraid. So we will, we will switch to LockBob again. So I also contacted persons I wanted to learn from and ask questions that are important to me, not the others. That's very important. And I highly advise you, uh, especially for those who are not native English speakers, and that was very difficult for me too, because you, you give the simple question in a simple way, no high expressions, no difficult expressions. And sometimes you get the answer, especially from the native English speakers, you get the answer, you know, you sim not quite understand. So don't be afraid, you know, to re-ask the question or just, you know, to confirm if you understood it right. So keep the dialogue going. So that's very, very important. I also followed the activities on social media. So I, I knew what they are engaged in. Um, I, I was trying to be engaged in this as well, because you know every every event, every discussion, every training, every occasion gives you the opportunity to learn something new. So just don't be afraid to show some initiative from your side, because no one will invite you to join at the beginning. I also offered my volunteering services for the academia in order to help the university to prepare better specialists for our industry. So I'm involved in the mentorship program at the university, and I'm very happy about that. Every year I have two or three students, you know, I am mentoring. Uh, I also give uh, speeches for the, for the students at, at the academia about what does it mean to be a translator or what does it mean to be a project manager, because these are two different fields. And I, I really enjoy doing that. I also said no to many things, but I was ready to ask questions in order to say yes next time. For example, I said no to many things, you know, I wasn't qualified for or capable to do something. But then after, after saying no, I was ready to dig into deeper, like uh, trying to figure out, you know, what I was lacking for just to just to say yes the next time because you know people will not offer you so many times uh, the same thing they will find the the other resources you know that they will be capable and qualified to take i also attended as many free online trainings classes as my occupational life allowed we all know you know that we have only 24 hours per day but you know uh, I see some advantages of COVID as well, because uh, I remember it was maybe in April or May. Uh, two days I was sitting at the conference in China with Luz, and uh, the next day I was already in the United States, you know, sitting uh, on the hill speaking with the congressmen. It was fun. It was good, really. So that also allowed to ex expand my network and to build my bigger network also to learn from the others so the last but not the least you know i listen to people what they have to say and learn from their stories so just don't be afraid you know to devote some time of of your precious time you know to listen to the people and try to keep the dialogue going 
that's that's very very important so thank you UT Cam, for the given opportunity and the participants for their attention i hope i didn't make you fall asleep so you can find me on linkedin twitter or facebook i'm always ready you know to accept new friends i always ready to meet them you know when i'm in the country so please feel free to contact me let's be friends let's communicate you know let's build a new and nice not new let's build you know nicer and more comfortable industry for ourselves so now i'm ready for the qa session or if i'm out of time no. I will, i'm giving my stage to ivona and i'm still here after the ivona's presentation uh, thank, thank you. you we have questions here thank you for an amazing presentation uh, uh we have some questions already here yeah Good. Um, hi, morning. Thank you a lot for your speech. You didn't make us fall asleep. And actually, this Good. topic is really actual for me. And I was also interested in, brand, in building my personal brand. And thank you for sharing your experience. That is the most valuable thing ever. Uh, well, my question is, uh, you have said that people shouldn't be afraid of being mistaken and just everyone has his or her own failures and so on. Well, shall you share your maybe biggest fail or failure, some mistake for us just to know that professionals can be also mistaken? And also, in order to be honest with you, I also had my personal failure yesterday when I have failed to uh, interpret simultaneously. Well, yeah, that is my question. So what is your biggest mistake or failure in building your personal brand. Okay, thank you very much. I was expecting for that question, but you know, I made so many mistakes in my life that I cannot pick one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, the, the one that comes into my mind, I was interpreting as well, but I'm not taking the blame only on myself, but uh, I remember I was invited the last day I was invited to uh, to translate you know to the audience uh, because one of the interpreters were sick so I had to I had to change her to replace her and they said okay the topic will be about the you know cultural inheritance and so on and so on it's usual stuff as they say okay and then you know one of the famous people died in Lithuania and when I stood you know to next to the to, to the speaker he started to to speak about you know that famous person you know what did he do you know for for his life you know his impact to Lithuanian culture and so on and so on so i wasn't prepared at all so yes they then you know they uh, they didn't pay me uh of course they were not satisfied but uh the lesson learned is, you know, that you cannot go just simply like this. You cannot even, you know, replace your friends if you are, if they are not very, very good friends, you know, that you can afterwards sit and have a beer and say, look, what the f you did for me. So because, you know, you are ruining my reputation. Yeah, so this was one of my failures uh, in the professional life when I changed, you know, to be on the on the other side of the freelancers. Uh, I probably once I took uh, too complicated project for me that I couldn't, you know, cope. But I'm very happy, you know, that I had the already many industry friends, you know, that they helped me to clarify the issues I couldn't understand, and uh, that helped me a lot. So Thank these are the. Uh, Thank you, Indre, for, for, for sharing your for sharing your failure. It's very import, important to uh, everyone, especially the beginners, to know that everyone has a right for for a failure. Uh, do we have uh, any other questions? Do we have time for this? Ah, we don't. Ha uh, we, have, we have a couple of minutes. Uh -huh. If there is any one short question, if we have, or uh, we can leave them uh, for the this time for audience discussion. Yeah, but we really, we really, we really hope for your uh, engagement and participation in the discussion after the second, uh, second um, presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Indre. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. So don't, don't leave. <laughs> don't go. To